Hello and welcome to the last and final part of our little Aztec tutorial. At the moment we are about 8 nautical miles out of the cluster of VOR. And in cluster of VOR we will start our approach back into the Tegel. So the first thing we want to check is the weather conditions in Tegel. So we go to our radio and put the ATIS on active 125.9. And now uh, we listen to the ATIS. See, no winds, very nice, temperature is nice. Our altimeter setting hasn't changed, and runway 8, as we want to use it, is in use, so very fine. And now we put the Brim the air going, Berlin uh, Director on active and this is on one two one point one one two so we put this on active and take a tower on standby as this would be the next frequency we need and now we prepare for the approach to Berlin Tegel and here you see our approach, and as you see from the cluster of VOR, we will take the 283 radio for exactly 32 nautical miles till we reach a point called Lersi or Lima Echo Romeo Sierra India. And at this point, we will turn 17 degrees to the north, then catch the localizer and let the glide slope guide us down to the one way. And you see here the Tegel West NDB functions as a locator outer marker so that we can check our height on the glide slope and we will also use this as backup for our approach. The second thing you probably may spot is that on the first leg from KLF to Lersi we should be at 4000 feet. We are currently at 3000 feet and we will stay at 3000 feet. For the simple reason this approach is taken by the normal jet traffic to Tegel as well and they are doing normally 240 knots so we are 100 knots slower and we just simply don't want to block their path so we stay at 3000 feet and therefore we are separated. So we're coming uh, very close to the VOR now and this means it's time to set our new course to A3 to A3 here and the same on the VOR indicator Two and three. Very nice. One and a half miles to go. So the needle starts moving, and we start our turn. Yeah, this was probably a little bit too fast. Now we start to correct our course. And perfect. And now we fly for exactly 32 uh, nautical miles and then turn to the north. So we are about 5 nautical miles out of Lersi now and at this point we would contact ADC state our position and advise them about our intentions. We are still in VFR, so we would not necessarily have to do it, but it's just good airmanship to let them know before that we are here, that all the traffic around us knows that we are here, and get them an early start to know that we are going to enter restricted airspace fairly soon. So when we reach uh, Lersi or about one nautical mile before we reach we will start our turn to 17 degrees north. And the important thing is this is 17 degrees track. And track and heading are not necessarily the same. So in layman's term, track is the line you would draw on a map and heading is the direction your nose is pointing on. And for example, if you have a crosswind pushing you around, your track and heading wouldn't be the same. 
We are in the lucky position that we don't have winds today, so our track and heading are the same. And we don't have to calculate our wind correction angle. But if you're interested, our compass and the HSI shows our heading. And here on the GPS, you can see our track information. So even if you have no data and can't calculate your wind correction angle, you could play with your heading until you get here on the right track display. So now we are nearly at Lazy and at this point we will start our turn. So we go direct north or 17 degrees to the north. That was a bit too fast. So, 17 degrees now. We take a good look at our engine instruments. Everything's looking nice here, so our instruments are looking nice as well. And we start to level off. And now we go to our GPS and the radio stack and set the radios ready for approach. So the first thing is we don't need the VOR information anymore. So we uh, push the button and now set the ILS uh, frequency on our on radios. And for runway 8 wide, Integral this is 108.5. So put it on active and the same for NAV2. 108.5. And you see both NAV flags telling us we don't receive the local at the moment, but this will change every second. Now, then, as I told you, we want to use the Tail West NDV as backup. So we go to our ADF radio down here and set the frequency for the Tail West NDV and this is 3, 9, sorry, our direction, 2. And now you see as the needle has moved and is pointing directly to the Tail West NDV. On our ADF, we set our current course, 17 degrees. And now this needle will start moving this way. And when it's on 79 degrees, so runway heading, we know we are aligned with the runway. And short before this needle reaches our 79 degree, we know we would have to start our turn. And when we are directly over the NDB, this needle will move 180 degrees, so we know we are over the NEV and we can verify our height above the glide slope and this should be about 1600 feet at this moment. And now you see the nav flags from our HSI and the VR indicator disappeared. So we set uh, here also one way heading, 79 degrees. Past 79. 79 as well. Everything is set up for approach, and the only thing we have to do now is verify that the ILS is in range and that we choose the right one. So we put NAV1 on speaker, listen to the Morse code and uh, this one was correct. We do the same for NAV2. Yeah, the Morse code is correct again. And we do the same for our ADF's uh, automatic direction finder. And yes, this was the correct code of the MDB. So everything is uh, fine there. So as you can see from our GPS and the ADF needle nearly pointing at one way heading is that we have to do our 
turn on final fairly soon. So we put the heading select out of the autopilot so that we have manual control. Then we uh, take a short look at our engine instruments. Everything's looking fine here. All our, our instruments looking fine here and you see the localizers coming in. So we turn on to final. And thanks to my talking, we overshoot a bit, but it's nothing what we can't uh, correct. The airport comes into view. There it is. And there we are on final. Very nice. And the goal is for approach just to keep both lines in the center. So now we put our mixture lever on fully rich, our prop lever fully forward, and we pull back on the power a bit so that we start to reduce our speed. We are slightly off to the right, so we make gently corrections and use our visual reference as well. Because these instruments are very, very sensitive and by, if you chase them too hard, you probably have an unstable approach. And when we see the airport, as we do, we can use the visual reference as well. Now you see the glide stops coming in, so we put the autopilot off completely. And gently start our descent. To be on the glide slope, our descent rate should be something between uh, around 700 feet per minute. And we pull back on the power again, slightly bit, and put the electric fuel pumps on. So that if our normal fuel pumps fail, they take over immediately. And we switch to take the tower. Make gently corrections to our descent rate and our course. We pull back on the power a bit and reduce our speed. On approach, our speed should be about 90 knots, so we still have quite a bit to reduce. Are too low. And now you see we are directly over the NDB and our height, our altitude is 1500 feet, so we are slightly too low. We correct this. Now the speed is coming uh, back very nicely, so we put in the first stage of flaps. Adjust the power still a little bit. Looking very nice, directly on course, directly on this glide slope. Second stage of flap, and we lower the landing gear. Final stage of flaps. You adjust all descent rate, make a slightly little course correction and now the speed is coming back too fast so we give a little bit of power a bit more and keep the aircraft nice and stable so we are above the runway now so we Gently pull back the power for idle. And we start to clear the aircraft. And gently put it on the ground. Manual thrust, then nose wheel. And we start to brake. Use the rudder to keep it on the center line. 
and it can be tracked with claps again and both those annoying fuel pumps off so the next exit you will vacate the runway And we will stop here. So now we put the uh, taxi lights on, landing lights off. We go to our radio, put Tegel ground onto active. So one two one seven five. Put it on active. Get the taxi clearance, and now taxi back to our parking position. So here's our parking spot, no crown crew there, so we don't have to switch off our taxi light and if there would be ground crew, crew we would switch the taxi lights off so that we don't blind them. But now we turn on our parking position, nicely done. I break. That's a parking brake and welcome in Berlin. So now the uh, last thing to do is shut down the aircraft. So we switch the lights off. P2 heat off. Taxi light off. We switch the transponder off, our distance measurement unit. And then we put Mixture lever on cut off and we switch the magnetos off. We do the same for the second engine. Cut off, magnetos off. We check that the autopilot is off. We switch our avionics off. Then our anti collision light, last the navigation light. And last but not least, the battery master. Then we can open the door. Get to the outside, press shift and three, and secure the aircraft. So, that's it. That was our little training flight. Thank you very much for joining me. And if you have questions, as always, just write it in the comments below, and I try to answer them as fastly and correctly as possible. And thank you a lot for watching, and see you at the next time. Bye-bye.